Okay, so today I'm gonna to be teaching you how to take these clips from this to this and this to this and this to this. This is my 2022 Premiere Pro color grading tutorial. Okay, so let's get started with the camera setup. Let's be honest, a lot of your colors are going to come from how you set your camera up, whether you're shooting in a flat color profile or not, whether you're shooting with the right exposure or not, and whether you're nailing your white balance or not. Let's talk about color profiles. There are kind of three types of flat color profiles. You have your standard flat color profile, which is just your camera changing a handful of settings, not really capturing too much more information, but it does give you a little bit more flexibility when color grading. You definitely don't wanna be shooting in the standard color profile because that is gonna bake on the camera's color science into your video, and that's not what you want. The second one is a log profile. Now, log profiles capture more dynamic range and more color depth. They come out of your camera looking incredibly flat and you do have to do quite a lot of work to get them to where you want them to be. And last but not least, and probably something that's unachievable for most, that's also unachievable for me, is shooting in RAW. RAW is amazing and it does give you a lot more flexibility than a flat color profile or a log color profile would, but for a lot of people and for a lot of cameras, this is not achievable. Shooting in RAW is more or less restricted to a lot of cinema cameras and even if your camera does shoot RAW, chances are the files are gonna be absolutely massive. So nine times out of 10, shooting log is gonna be ideal. Okay, so next up is nailing your white balance. Now this is really important because unlike a RAW image coming out of your camera, you cannot change and you don't have as much flexibility when it comes to white balance. If you're shooting a raw image, you can simply change the white balance no problem at all, but that is not the case when shooting video. You really wanna make sure you're dialing in your white balance for more or less every single shot you're shooting to make sure you do get your colors right. And last but not least, while we're talking about cameras, is exposure. This is arguably the most important thing you can nail when shooting video, simply for the fact that you cannot recover as much information or detail like you can in a raw image. See, if you're shooting in a log color profile, you do not wanna be exposing your image evenly. You actually wanna be overexposing at least one to two stops to make sure you're capturing your camera's full dynamic range. This is really important because you don't wanna get home with a really dark image and then you spend all your time trying to brighten it up. And I can tell you from experience, this is not ideal and it will not work. Well, at least you won't get very good results. Okay, now with all the camera settings out of the way, let's dive into Premiere Pro and let's start talking about color grading. Okay, so now we're in Premiere Pro. This is probably what it's gonna look like after you've dragged some clips onto the timeline. Now, first things first, you wanna head up into the top right corner if your Premiere Pro is up to date and you wanna click on the color panel. Now here is where you can find all the color tools, the Lumetri color tab, and this is where I like to color grade all my footage. Something I really like to do is I like to resize the color tab to make it a little bit bigger. This just gives me finer control over the sliders individually, and makes it a little bit easier to make smaller changes. The next thing I like to do is I like to open up Lumetri scopes. If you don't have Lumetri scopes open, you can simply come to help and type in Lumetri scopes, and then turn them on. And this gives you a pretty overall good representation of what your image looks like on paper. Now what I mean by on paper is you can see here, we have some blue values, some red values, some yellow values, some green values. And if I just change the exposure, for example, you can see all of these values change individually. We go down, they go, all go down, we go up, they all go up. So what this can do is this can tell you if you're ever gonna be clipping. So if I come to here where the blacks are and I start to drag this all the way down, you can see some of this red is starting to touch zero, which means there is no information in some of these red pixels. And then if I do the same with the whites, you can see that in some of the blue pixels, they are completely white and there is no information. You do wanna make sure you're not clipping your images in either way, unless that's your style for some reason, but this is a really good way to be able to see in real time and on paper what your image is actually doing. Okay, now with that out of the way, let's dive into the actual color grading itself. So I like to start with the basic correction tab and then kind of just make my way down. Something that I like to do, of course, is apply my cinematic LUTs and I will show you how I work with those later on. But if you'd like to check them out, you can go to the link in the description and you can use the code cinematic for a cheeky little discount if you guys are interested in picking those up and you like any of my colors. Okay, so first things first is I make sure I get the exposure perfect. So as I can see here, the image is more or less very, very well balanced in exposure. And what I wanna do is because I shot this in log, I'm gonna be wanting to increase the contrast and the saturation. So you can do that in a few ways. You can change the blacks, the whites, the shadows, the highlights, and you can also increase the contrast slider. I like to do a little mix of both, and I also like to use the tone curve. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna increase the contrast. I'm gonna reduce the shadows a little bit. I'm gonna increase the highlights, but not too much. 
and then I'm also going to increase the whites just a little bit and drop the blacks. So now as you can see, if you come back over to effects control and you wanna see a before and after of your shot, you can just hit this little FX or you can hit the FX up here and this will show you from before and after. So as you can see, we just added a little bit more contrast to make the image a little bit more deep again. And we've taken away that log fade that we got when we shot log in the camera. Okay, so I don't like playing with the saturation here whatsoever. I really like to dial that in and make sure I'm saturating the colors I wanna saturate down in the curves below. But something I will like to do is I like to change the temperature and the tint if necessary. I think this image has a fairly accurate white balance. It might be on the green side just a little bit. So what we might wanna do here is just add a little bit of purple tint. It's not much and you might not even be able to notice a difference, but on some screens you will be able to. So I like to make sure I get this right. Okay, so here is where I would usually apply one of my LUTs after I've made some small tweaks. But for this video, I'm not going to. Like I said, I will show you later on, but right now let's just stick with what we've got. Okay, so into the curves here, I I usually add a nice slight S curve just to add a little bit more contrast into the shot nothing too serious and then I like to increase the blacks just a little bit kind of fades out the blacks a little bit and if we had head over to the Lumetri scopes we can see that we're not clipping in any way shape or form and this is a very well and evenly balanced image okay so coming down here to the hue and saturation if you don't know how these work pretty much this is you can choose a color range and you can saturate or desaturate this probably isn't the best example as you can see we want to saturate the blues or we want to desaturate the blues you can double click to reset the line which is super handy here we have hue versus hue, which means you can select a color range again, and then you can make things really green, you can make things really purple, you can change the hue of the color. And then hue versus luminance is you can change the luminance, which pretty much is the brightness value of the color you, range you wanna select. So as you can see, we can make the blues really dark or we can make the blues really bright. Either way, these tools are very powerful and this is how I dial a lot of my colors in. So for this example, I've already adjusted the tone curve and now I'm gonna come into hue versus saturation. Now, since this is a pretty blue shot and there really aren't any other colors, I'm gonna desaturate everything that might not be blue because I want this blue to be fairly prominent. And then I'm just gonna desaturate the blue just a little bit especially on this side of things. We might bring the blues up just a little bit more here, but I wanna take away that tealy aqua kind of vibe. And I wanna make sure there's more of a, not so much of a royal blue, but I don't want to have this kind of, I don't know, electric glow. I'm not a huge fan of it. So I'm gonna take the greens and the aquas away while leaving the blues and a little bit of the purples up there. I do like the overall tone of this, but what I will do here is I'm going to just adjust the greens and the aquas again, and I'm gonna pull them down a little bit to this blue side, and as we can see, this is before and this is after. So we've just added a nice amount of contrast and we're taking away or adding some of the colors that we do or don't want. Now another thing here is the luminance. I actually like the overall exposure of this shot. And if we play this back, you can still see plenty of detail in this crashing water. So I don't think I need to play with the luminance values here whatsoever. Okay, let's close up the curves tab and let's head into the color wheels and match. This is where you can put colors into the shadows, midtones, and highlights. Now, of course, the shadows are the darker parts of the footage, the highlights are the lighter parts, and the midtones are the even parts, the parts that sit in the middle of this Lumetri scope here. I would say between 70 to 30 are kind of the midtones of your shot. So to be honest here, I don't want to change too much because I'm already liking the way this shot looks, but I might want to put just a little bit of blue into the shadows, not too much, and I don't want to make sure I'm heading over to this aqua side. I want to be making sure I'm staying over to this true blue side and that's pretty much it I don't want to adjust the highlights at all and the midtones in this image are already very nice and blue and I'm very happy with the tones I've already got okay closing that up last thing I like to do is add a little bit of vignette now of course this is all up to you and what you want your style to be but I do like to add a little bit of vignette so as you can see here without the vignette it still looks great, but with the vignette, it just kind of dials in and it makes you focus in on the wave a little bit more. I'm just gonna increase the feather here just a little bit to make sure it fades off nicely and there are no harsh edges. And I would say I am fairly happy with this shot. I'm absolutely loving the way it looks. I'm loving the contrast we brought back and the blues are looking great. Okay, so now you understand the Lumetri color panel in Premiere Pro. I'm now gonna move on to this shot and we're gonna use some of my LUTs. Okay, so first things first, I like to dive in here and we can browse the LUTs. I've got my Canon pack open from the cinematic LUT pack because I shoot with Canon. And I think for this one, we might just use Canon one. I really enjoy using this LUT and I think it's super versatile. And as you can see here, it's already given us this look. I really like the way this has come out. It might be a little bit too blue. So what we might do here is just dial down the intensity a little bit. And then we're gonna come up to the basic tab. We're gonna increase the temperature a little bit. I might've shot this with a slightly wrong white balance. And now we can go from here. 
I think the overall exposure of this shot is pretty much nailed. Let me just see the before and after. I really like the way that's come through. And then we're gonna head into the curves. Now, all of my LUTs already come with the tone curve adjusted, but we might just add a little bit more for this shot. We're just doing, gonna increase the highlights a little bit. And then we're gonna come down to hue versus saturation. Something I wanna do straight away is remove a lot of these greens and a lot of the teal blues. As you can see here, it's just gonna clean up the shot nice and well. And as you can see around that mountain there, before we've got a lot of this kind of tealy blue, and then after, that's been pretty much gone. From here, I really like the overall tone of this image, so I'm not gonna change the hue versus hue, but I will come into the luma values here, and we are gonna drop the luminance of the blue overall, just kind of bring that sky back a little bit more. And as you can see here, we've got before and we've got after. This is the style I like to go for. And as you can see with a LUT, we've color graded this shot within a matter of 30 seconds or so. Something else I like to do is I like to add another Lumetri color effect. I'll close the first one and then I like to create a mask. Now here is where you can dial in a little bit more of a vignette and I like to do this if I need to control a certain area or if I want to make sure the shot is focusing on the subject I want them to. Now, you can come down here, I selected the circle mask and then I like to increase the feather. This is just to make sure once again there's no harsh edges and then I like to come into the curve and I will add my vignette this way. You also wanna invert it if you wanna be selecting outside of the mask. And what we wanna do and make sure is we've got the highlights staying bright and we've got the dark parts staying dark. So as you can see there, if we click off this image and then click back onto it, we've got without the mask and then with the mask. So this just helps you focus in on the subject a little bit more. And I'm actually seeing, once again, we might just come into the first one and we might just warm this shot up just a little bit more. Maybe add a touch of purple in there because it is quite green, not too much. And we might come back into the curves. We might desaturate this green a little bit more. We might come up to the basic panel drop the shadows a little bit, there we go. Okay, this is looking very nice. Okay, so if we watch this clip back, I'm incredibly happy with how this has come out. I think the tones are great. And if we have a look at before versus after, I'm very happy with this shot. Okay, last but not least, we have this shot here. Okay, so once again, we're gonna start off with one of my LUTs. I like to head into the creative panel and add the LUT in there, not in the basic correction. This is just so I can dial down my LUT if I need to, or dial up my LUT if I need to. So we're gonna head into custom, and we're gonna check this shot out. Okay, so it's pretty golden right now. Let's try one of the warmth LUTs. Let's go warmth one. Okay, very nice. So I might actually increase this LUT just a little bit. Then we're gonna come into here, we're gonna increase the contrast. We had the light just coming over a little bit too high here, so we might have shot this a little bit late. We're gonna drop the shadows of the shot overall, and we're gonna increase the highlights. So we're just adding back some contrast here, drop these blacks down a little bit, drop the shadows back a bit. And we, I do like how this light is spilling over the mountain here. So we're gonna continue with that kind of theme, and as you can see already before and after, we've already got a fairly nice shot here and a fairly nice grade but I know we can do a little bit better. So I'm gonna add another curve into here and we're just gonna do a simple S curve. As you can see, bumping up these midtones and therefore bumping up these highlights really brings the light over the ridge. We might dial this back just a little bit. As you can see before and after, this is looking great. We're gonna increase the blacks here just to make sure there's no clipping and I don't look too dark. And then something I do wanna change is I wanna change the yellows and the greens here and I wanna make them a little bit more orange. And we're gonna do that just like that. And then we're also going to, we're thinking here, decrease or increase. We might decrease here and, whoop, and we might increase just here. There we go. Now I'm gonna come down here and we're gonna go into the mid-tones. We're gonna add a little bit of orange in there and we're gonna drop the shadows into the blue side of things. We have a look before and after. I'm really starting to like this. We might also just be able to add a slight vignette on here, looking good. And then last but not least, we're gonna add a new Lumetri color. We're gonna add a mask around here. We're gonna do it like such. I'm gonna make sure I'm getting all the attention that I need in the shot. The subject just happens to be me. We're gonna invert it and then we're gonna hit curves and we're gonna drop the shadows as such and we're gonna increase the highlights and as you can see, if we're increasing the highlights in the bottom right corner, you can see the most. 
We're not getting a huge effect, but in the top left corner we are. And when we drop the shadows in the bottom corners, we're getting the effects, but in the top, we're not getting so much, which is perfect because we want the sky to stay bright and we want the dark parts to stay dark. Okay, with that being done now, we can check out our grade before and after. I'm really liking how this is looking. If we come back to here, our initial one, we might want to increase the temperature just a little bit. I, uh, something hard, definitely very difficult when shooting in the Middle East or shooting in areas where the surroundings are the same tone as your skin, is if you adjust these tones, if you adjust the oranges whatsoever, it adjusts the whole image, but this is still looking very nice. We might also just increase the highlights overall, decrease these. And something else that I'm seeing right now, we might add another Lumetri color effect. We're gonna add a box this time. And we're just going to mask out this little area here. We're gonna add a nice feather. And then we're just going to drop the shadows, make this a little darker. We're also gonna drop the saturation and make this a little bluer. And then we're gonna to continue to drop the shadows. And as you can see there, we have gone from that to that, which has just dialed down that a lot nicer. And because there isn't a lot of movement in this shot, this is going to track very well and there's gonna be no problems whatsoever. And in a nutshell, that is how I color grade my footage. With that being said though, we can dive back into the creative panel here and we can just cycle through a couple of my LUTs here. This is looking fairly nice. It probably needs a little bit more work. And if we have a look at warmth too, what have we got going on here? This is also something different. We might wanna just dial this down a little bit and that's a nice grade from there. But in a nutshell, that is how I color grade my footage inside of Premiere Pro. Today, we've color graded these three clips from start to finish and this is my full workflow. Guys, that's gonna wrap up today's video. If you have enjoyed, let me know down below. If you're new around here, subscribe. And as always, I will catch you in the next one. Peace.